that matches the point, my pointed head. There you go. It's like an arrow going up. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Bernhardt. I am thrilled to be doing 101 as we are right now. And uh, I'm, I'm, I've been conducting the fabulous Edmonton Symphony Orchestra for 15 years. And am I lucky? We'll start with the first question. What was your earliest recital and what did you play? Well, my earliest recital was age nine piano. I played um, a little Bach. I played early easy Bach. I played uh, a mood piece by Grieg and maybe five scales. <laughs> First time I ever had a chance to conduct was a senior in college after a year and a half of begging the conductor of the college community orchestra to give me a chance to conduct. I was the librarian, the stage manager, the personnel manager. Uh, I, I, I did the general factotum for the, the orchestra. And he finally gave me a chance to conduct the Johann Christian Bach Symphonia, D major Symphonia, which I uh, do occasionally from time to time still to remind me that how lucky I was to have a chance at the start. You were like, I'm doing everything else. Can you give me one more thing to do? Just let me <laughs> wave my hands. Let me wave my hands. Let me try it. How long have you been with the ESO? It started 16 years ago with a call from Rob McAleer. Uh, and I came for as a guest conductor. I think the group, a pops, it was a Pops group, wonderful people named Five by Design. And uh, it was after that that Rob invited me to the, for the first time to conduct the Symphony Under the Sky Festival. And uh, the rest is either hysterical or history. I think we'll go with history. Okay. No. I accept hysterically. <laughs> How many instruments do you know how to play? Trick question, do I know how to play? Uh, 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 still, I can still uh, play some piano. I, uh, I played guitar for many years in a, in a rock band, and uh, I did that whole coffee house thing for a while uh, back in the 1830s or the uh, 1960s, whichever you prefer. What is your guilty pleasure? I can listen to Beatles for hours still i can still listen to uh, that 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 were they were my my lightning along with i guess my three b's were bach uh beatles and baseball anything lightning that starts with b brisket you know that's all good classic rock and roll uh, and there are maybe a dozen pieces of opera that i could put on and just listen forever and I mean I, and there there are I mean there, I even there's some C Celine Dion songs that I adore I I have I have a long list of of guilty uh, uh guilty pleasures that involve mostly popular popular music what was the last album you purchased digital or physical he, there was a two disc that came out maybe tw 15 years ago 10 years ago of uh, the the, the Spielberg-Williams connection. Uh, and then just a couple of years ago with the Los Angeles Film Arts Orchestra, John recorded another 80 minutes of music, uh, of his own music that he had written in collaboration with Spielberg Films. So I now have the three, uh, the three CD set. Uh, digital might have been, um, some Brahms, I'm, which I'm, I'm now reading. One of the things that's happening on this, uh, on this hiatus, as it were, I'm now reading a, a Brahms biography by Jan Swafford that I've had for 20 years <laughs> sitting that I've never read. I'm about 60 pages from the, from the end uh, right now. What was the last piece of music you listened to? The A major intermezzo opus 118 of Brahms. There was just, it was being discussed in the book. What would your DJ name be? Just, just Bob. I know that doesn't work, but what the heck. DJ Just Bob. Yep. Who would be your partner on The Amazing Race? Mel Brooks. He's 90, uh, in He's his 90s. We do well together. And I'd laugh all the way. Horrible. It's a horrible answer, but I've never seen the show, so I'm just making it up. 
what would your personalized license plate be? Now, this is really interesting because I've wanted to do this for years, but I've never had the guts. Um, a baton is, is called a stick. You know, it's, it's, it's called a stick. But a lot of times what I do on stage is called shtick. So I was thinking that I would have shtick as my, as my uh, personalized license plate, which would be... S C H T I C K, which is I think the, Yidd the English Yiddish translation <laughs> to it, but and haven't done it, but that's what I thought I might do. What is your pre-concert ritual? When my kids were young, the pre-concert ri ritual was getting them at school, um, getting them from school, taking them to their soccer lesson, to their piano lesson, or their cello lesson, then coming home and having dinner and getting dressed and going to the hall. That was. <laughs> that they're really, uh, be, I, I think just because of how lucky I am to have been, been a family man and to have children, it, things are, uh, uh, I would say just, um, uh, there isn't really a, a, a standard thing. When I get to the hall, it depends if I have a pre-concert talk, I'll have to get my my head in, into that a bit, but um, usually uh, um, just a, a matter of just a little bit of quiet. What's something people might not know about you? Keeping the FBI thing out of it. Okay, I'm a former jock. I played uh, both soccer and baseball for four years in college and in high school, and. So I, I still enjoy sports and watching sports and trying to keep active and <clears throat> and uh, and golf is something I I play from when you know I'm I'm a, an avid once a monther if I can get the schedule to work. How many different cities have you lived in? Five. Five different cities. Uh, before that, Los Angeles for grad school and. Schenectady, New York for college and grew up in Rochester, New York. But then my first gig was in Toa, maybe six, Tuscaloosa, Alabama uh, at the University of Alabama, then Louisville as assistant conductor, then Amarillo, Texas, and then Tucson, Arizona, and then Rochester, New York, and then Chattanooga, Tennessee. What's your favorite city or country you've traveled to and why? Nora and I adore Edmonton and we love coming to Canada. We we're starting to branch out a little bit and have been to Quebec City and we've been to a few other places and in Canada and of course in Banff and Jasper but uh, but we actually from the beginning have felt like family in Edmonton and with the ESO. Do you have a nickname? I played the Little League baseball I was Bobby but uh, no I don't uh, Bob. Killer. They call me Killer. No, I just uh, just Bob. What's your favorite orchestra other than the ESO? The Boston, probably the Boston Pops. Just those those concerts in Symphony Hall that I've done over the last twenty five years or so are they're just realizing all the the those those feet the feet of the great, every great musician in the last century plus has been on that stage. And it's just a sense of, uh, it's, it's kind of awe that being there. What do you do in your free time? It's interesting because there's a lot of it now. <laughs> a lot more than it used to be. Um, I'm doing a lot of reading. I am trying to... Uh, we're doing a lot of walking. The, uh, our garden is, our yard is just exploding and verdant because of Nora's, of her native plant work. She's uh, involved with the Native Plant Society. So we have an extraordinary yard that we spend a lot of time in. All right, so the second part of this is very hard-hitting questions again. It's rapid fire and it's what the fans want to know, Bob. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Facebook or Instagram? Neither. Don't. Don't. Mm -mm. 
Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Cats or dogs? Now that's interesting because Nora and I are dog people with a cat and we have all kinds of scratches to prove it. We don't know what we're doing. Dine in or take out? These days, uh, uh, take out uh, and not that often. Apple or Android? Apple. PC or Mac? Mac. Morning or night? Night. We're both night owls. Call or text? I like having both, but texts can be misinterpreted more than calls, so it depends on how sensitive it is, but I like having both. Beethoven or Mozart? Yes. Schubert or Dvorak? In terms of orchestral music, probably Dvorak, but uh, Schubert songs, um, I mean, and, and some of his orchestral music, extraordinary. Tchaikovsky or Rachmaninoff? Yes. Book or movie? Book first, then movie. Mountain or ocean? Mountain. Wine or beer? Yes. <laughs> yes, but it uh, depends on the, the occasion. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars, yes, but I must say that since Rob McAleer has gotten, gotten us to be doing Star Trek concerts, my first all Star Trek concert was in Edmonton just a couple of years ago, my uh, esteem for the the body of work in Star Trek music has really risen. Last one is musicals or operas. I can I enjoy I can enjoy a musical, but it's but the, the opera goes can goes can get so deep, and uh, some I, I think composers some composers save the their most beautiful and most important music for, for their operas. You're gonna have to do a lot of editing on this. I don't think we're gonna edit any of this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, help. Everybody in Edmonton, Nora and I miss you. We adore you and we wish everyone to be healthy and safe and coping with all of this. And we can't wait till we're together again.